If you're looking online for a welding helmet, it can be pretty overwhelming to see all the options, all the brands, and all the features that you're going to see. So today what we're going to do is we're going to break down some of the options that you're going to see, talk about your needs, and figure out the best welding helmet for you. Without further ado, let's get to it. Now the fun part about picking out a new welding helmet is checking out all the different shells and all the different designs that you can get. And although it's the most fun part, it's the part that you really don't need my help with. So let's set these aside for now. And let's talk lenses. All right, so let's talk about the welding lenses themselves. So over here on the right, we've got our standard lenses. And over here on the left, I've got an auto darkening. Let's first talk about the standard lenses. Now these standard lenses have been around for longer than I've been alive, and they work very simply. They make it to where in normal light situations you can't see through, and when you have high intensity light on the other side, you can see it. Basically like a really dark pair of sunglasses, and that's exactly what they're meant to do. There's nothing fancy about them, they're made of glass, they're very clear so long as you keep them clean and scratch proof they, and they last for a very, very long time. Just because they're old, you know, it's old technology doesn't mean that there's not a lot of technology in them. So here I have another example and you can see in the camera reflection how much better you can see the camera in the yellow versus the black. So these gold lenses are designed to reflect a lot of light back at what you're welding. So if you struggle seeing your puddle, if you always think it's too dark, even when you go with a really light lens, uh, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, but that's this number here. This is going to allow you to throw light back at that weld to light it up. So if you're welding in a low light situation, uh, out of position, something like that, and you want a static lens, this is a really good option. Now all welding helmets, whether they're static or auto darkening, use the same measurement for how much light it's filtering out. So you can see here, I've got an 11 on the left. Uh, on the right, I've got a 10 right here. So these are different shades. So when we're welding, we wanna be somewhere between shade, uh, shade nine or 10. 10 is generally the lowest I recommend. Um, and then all the way up to 13. And the higher the number, the darker the image is gonna be or the more light it's gonna be pulling out of what you're looking through. So these are a really good option. They're super simple and the nice thing is they're cheap. So now let's talk about auto darkening. Now auto darkening has been around for a very long time and they've just gotten better with time. The nice thing about this is you can see directly through that lens. And then when you start welding, it's gonna darken to this darkness. Now this one is, uh, is dead, so I can't show you specifically with this one. Uh, but it does darken and then you can look through it. Now there is a delay in how long it takes to go from light to dark. With this lens, it is one in 25 thousandths of a second, which is very, very fast. And how does it do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. It has these little sensors and every auto darkening lens is going to be different, but you've got these sensors these sense light hitting them, and then it causes this screen to go dark. It's a really basic system, but it, it works very, very well. Then here on the front, you also have a little solar panel that helps keep the batteries charged. So if you're welding with the welding helmet a lot, it will keep your batteries charged and allow you to continue welding um, and keep that battery charged. Now on more advanced designs or more, more expensive, uh, let's be real. On more expensive models, you're gonna get some more options. So here in, on the left, we've got a delay time. What that means is how long it takes after you weld for the screen to go back to see-through. Sensitivity is how much light it takes to trip, you know, trip these little sensors. So if you're welding outside, so we, uh, you know, we need to understand whether welding inside or outside. You have some adjustability here to turn up or down your sensitivity. So with this welding helmet, you can actually turn it all the way down where it'll never change. And it puts, puts it in grind mode, so you can use it as a grind shield. 
And then if you crank it all the way up, it's not gonna take hardly any light to trip that sensor. So if the batteries were in this and weren't dead, this would probably be dark. And then over here on the right, we have our shade setting. So we can adjust the shade setting all the way down to 13. And you can actually adjust this one all the way down to five. You just have to toggle this switch up here. And now you're in the five to eight range. And here's the nine to 13 range. So this is gonna be for plasma work or torch work. And then this is gonna be for welding. So you get a lot of features packed in here. But you need to decide which one is better for you. So now that we've talked about the basics of how an auto darkening welding lens works and how a standard welding lens works, which one's best for you? Now, if you're just getting started, I highly recommend that you go with a high quality auto darkening lens. And I say high quality for two reasons. Number one is safety. You only got one set of eyes, so you need to take care of them. A high quality lens is gonna change somewhere in the neighborhood of one twenty-five thousandths of a second. Any lower than that, so when that bottom number gets smaller, we're making, you know, it's getting slower. When you get slower than that, that's more harmful light getting to your eyes. So you don't want that. You want something that changes really fast. So finding something in that range is really good. The other really important thing to look at is the clarity. Now I'm gonna put it up for you on the screen. You've got three pictures that you should be looking at. One is taken through a standard welding lens. One is taken through Miller's Clear Light 2.0. And the last one is taken through Lincoln's 4C lens. Now the 4C lens should look familiar to you because that's the, the one I've got in front of me here that we, were, that we were looking through. And then I'll show you the clear light later on down the line. But the differences in quality between the three are enormous. You're only gonna be able to weld better when you can see better. Especially as you're starting out and you don't have muscle memory to lean on, you're gonna to have to rely on your eyesight a lot more to figure out what you need to change. So if you wanna go auto darkening, I highly suggest you go with something at the higher, you know, the higher end of the budget because you're getting a lot more features out of it. Mainly the clarity and the speed. So you don't have to get the, you know, the welding helmet set the most tricked out, but make sure you're finding something with clarity and speed. That's really important. Now, if you don't have it in the budget for an auto darkening welding, welding helmet or a welding lens, don't worry. These are still an excellent option. And the biggest benefit to these is they don't go bad. So even our, even our example one that we're looking at now has a dead battery in it. These never lose batteries. So you don't have to worry about whether it's charged up or leaving it, you know, having to leave it out in the sun to charge those batteries or having to run to Walmart or CVS to find one. These are always gonna be ready to go. And the wonderful thing about these is these are relatively inexpensive for, for high quality glass, and glass is important. They do make some really cheap plastic ones, don't bother. Get glass ones, you'll be happy you did. You're also gonna get really, really good clarity with these, and you don't have to worry about speed at all because it is on all the time. You're never gonna get flashed so long as you have your welding helmet down. So these can also be a really good option. You might have to just get a bunch of them because you're not gonna have that adjustability. So now, let's move on to the different types of welding helmets that we can look at. Okay, so now that you've decided on an auto darkening lens or a static lens, let's talk about what it's gonna come in. Now we're not quite to the fun part about picking out the colors and picking out the designs. Really what we're looking at this is the type of helmet that we're gonna be needing to find. Now, the first one I wanna cover is some of the more goofy stuff you're gonna come across in your searching. This is a Jackson welding mask. This has a hood that you put on and then you put on this, you know, airsoft mask over top of it. Now, I call this, you know, kind of the goofy category, but I, I mean that endearingly because this is actually one of my favorite helmets. This is what I use when I need to get, you know, get an exhaust welded or if I need to get in a really tight spot. The size of this really helps get, you know, get your head in positions where you couldn't fit a helmet, you know, in a more traditional sense. So these are really good for certain situations, 
but not what I would recommend for your first welding helmet, and especially not for your only welding helmet. That leaves us with two categories. On the right hand side, I've got kind of our direct from manufacturer welding helmets, auto darkening welding helmets. And then we've got welding helmets that utilize the two by four standard lens here on my right. Now this is really important. Even though these welding helmets here on my right look far more similar to each other, these welding helmets here on my left are actually, actually have interchangeable parts. So you can use the two by four standard lenses that we looked at when we were talking about the different types of lenses, you can use those in either one of these welding helmets. If you want that versatility, but you also want auto darkening, I've got here a, it's called a two by four C series welding lens. This fits in a standard two by four helmet, but it utilizes that auto darkening feature. And because it's a four C, you're getting that quality that we talked about before and that clarity. Now the downside to going with something like this is it's only going to have two sensors, whereas more uh, higher quality, you know, direct manufacturer stuff is going to have three or four. Two is still plenty and it's one that I've used a lot. Uh, this is what I welded with basically all last year. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why I switched from using it. Uh, and I actually used it in this sugar scoop hood. When you get into this, you know, this category, the, the stand, you know, standard lens stuff, in standard lens welding helmets is the only time I've ever experienced lightning. Meaning that as I'm welding, light is getting up in and around my lens and hitting my eyes. Not coming around the back or not you know, over top or underneath. It's coming through the lens and squeaking around the sides. This is the only time I've ever experienced it was in this particular welding helmet with this particular lens. But that's not to say that all of these are gonna do that. It might just take some, some messing around. What I did is I threw the lens in there and I just went ahead and just got some, some black silicone and I just siliconed the thing in there and uh, only, took it, only took it out when I needed to change the batteries in it. Now in this category, you're gonna have a few different options. So like we talked about with the sugar scoop, and you can get these from a whole bunch of different companies that are gonna have all sorts of different designs, different patterns, um, different features. So like this one from Pipeliners Cloud is made of carbon fiber. It's super, super light, which is why I loved it so much. And then we've got something like this, which is a pancake hood that's, again, very light has a lot of protection on one side of your face, no protection on the other. And what's nice about these is they have a wooden box on the inside. So if you're doing a lot of outdoor welding, you can sand this down to your face so it fits perfectly. So no light can get at you from, from behind you. You're not gonna get any glare off that lens. This is the ideal circumstance for welding outside because you're not gonna have any light leaks. And once you sand them down, they're very comfortable, but if you don't sand yours down, it is going to hurt your face. So sand your pancake hoods down. Now when we look at our direct manufacturer side of things, the benefit to this is I've never experienced light leak with one of these. Because of the way they're designed and they're layered, it's pretty much impossible for that to happen. The downside is even though these look more similar, there's really no interchangeable parts outside of the headgear, so long as you're within you know, the same brand. So I've got a Miller here and a Miller here. I could swap those headgears, but I can't go from uh, Lincoln to Miller with the headgear. So the lenses are all different. The, uh, the outer shields are all gonna be different. The inner shields are all gonna be different. Uh, even the batteries are gonna be different. So just something to keep in mind. But what you lose in kind of that versatility, you gain in feature. So the nice thing about these is generally, uh, generally you're gonna get a lot more in terms of you know, things that you can do with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna show you the inside of one of these bad boys so you can see which, what, uh, what you're getting. Okay, so I went ahead and just took it out of the welding helmet. Getting the camera around the headgear was kind of a pain in the butt. But just to show you guys how uh, one of these that is actually working, I know we looked at one before, but so here I have, this one actually has an auto on off feature. So one of the things to look for is if it has auto on off, that's a 
pretty awesome thing because there's nothing more frustrating than going to weld and realizing you haven't turned your welding helmet on. So all the same sort of features that we looked at before, this one comes equipped with Goldilocks mode, I call it, because you can adjust your shade in half, you know, by halves. So you can have an eight, five, and then a nine. So you can just kind of tune that in just a little bit easier. Our delay, like we talked about, we can adjust that up and down to, you know, all that does is change how long it takes to go from dark to light. And then we've got our sensitivity. So we can crank our sensitivity way up to make it dark, you know, easier for it to go dark. And then over here on the right hand side, we've got different modes. So right now we're on weld mode. Here I've got cutting mode. So it changes the, the range I, I can be in. So this is for plasma cutting or torch cutting. And then the last mode is grind mode. So you don't need a designated grind shield. You can just use your welding helmet and it's gonna keep you nice and protected. Now, uh, I'm gonna mention it because it's one of my favorite features um, and, and Miller's one of my favorite welding helmets. Miller actually has another mode that goes here on some of their, and the, you know, the next tier up, which is the digital elite. This is a digital performance, which is called X mode. So rather than relying on the sensors that we've talked about before, rather than relying on those to switch from dark to uh, from light to dark, it actually senses electromagnetic field changes and it changes based on that. So if you're welding outside, you know, in, in direct sunlight, or if you've got uh, your sensors covered up, you can use the X mode and it works really, really well. So just to throw that out there. So if you're, if you want auto darkening and you're a little thrown off by, you know, you want to weld outside and you don't want to, uh, you don't want your hood to just stay dark all the time. X mode is a wonderful way to get around that. Okay, so the last big thing that we need to talk about is comfort. Welding is half being comfortable. So finding something with the headgear that you like is really important. Now you have the kind of old standby headgear. So I've got one front strap in here, a top strap, and a back strap. I've got the Miller version, which has four straps. I've got a front strap, two top straps that are fixed, and one adjustable back strap. And then the newest welding helmet I have has Miller's latest and greatest headgear design. It looks pretty wild. It's got a front strap, a fixed top strap, an adjustable top strap, and an adjustable back strap with this big wide area to grab the back of your head. Now, which one is going to be best for you? I could, I could sit here and show you, you know, all of their advertisements and ergonomics reporting and all that. But really what you need to do is you just need to kind of figure out where, what you're looking at. Find a local store that has one that you can go try on and go try them on. Um, and don't be afraid of looking stupid. So to help you feel okay with that, I'm going to show you what I like to do when I put on a welding helmet. When I'm trying one out, I like to you know, really make sure I've got all my settings done and then I'll pretend I'm welding in the store, you know, I'll, I'll do some imagine, you know, stack some imaginary dimes. They always look really good in the store. Uh, results may vary at home. Uh, you're going to look silly, but that's okay. It's okay. It's okay to look silly. It's better that you look silly and get something that's really comfortable for you than just say, well, that looks comfortable and then go home and then try it on and realize you don't like it. So then you have to either go back and return it or you're going to, you know, just keep it because you don't want to mess with that and you're not going to be happy with what you purchase. So look silly, go to your local welding supply store, try on welding helmets, look silly, stack some imaginary dimes. People are going to be impressed with them. The last thing on comfort or second to last thing, is you can actually get different front straps. So I love Miller welding helmets, but their, their front straps on their, their welding helmets are like cheese graters. They are the most uncomfortable thing I've ever experienced. So what I do is I go get different, you know, replacement pads. I used to take microfiber towels and, you know, and sew them on the front. Now I've upgraded, I've moved up in the world. I go get, uh, this is from BSX. This is a, basically just a front pad replacement. 
These are really nice and soft. You can get the like a two pack of these for like 10 bucks. Uh, a nice thing to keep and I keep an extra one in the bag in case one gets real you know, messed up, I can just replace it. So making sure that the headgear is comfortable and then pay attention to how much your helmet weighs. Especially when you start getting out of position. If I've got my helmet on my head and I'm leaning way out, you know, way off to one side or the other, the further out that weight gets from, from your head, the more torque is going to be applied. So make sure that you're getting something with a weight that you're comfortable with. Part of the reason why I, I purchased this welding helmet recently is the weight of it. It's really light. Uh, it's 17 ounces. So which for an auto darkening welding helmet is pretty light. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is viewing area. So if we stack these on top of each other, you can see that my viewing area for the standard 2x4 lens is maybe just under half the size of, uh, of this, big, this big viewing area on the, on the Viking helmet. Does that really matter? Well, you're going to get advertised a lot about this. But just imagine that you're, you're in the hood now, you're looking through, here. you're looking through. If you're welding along this line, everything else here and here doesn't really matter. You need to be able to see right there just around your welding, you know, what you're welding. So in my opinion, it doesn't matter that much. But if that viewing area is important to you, I want to show you one more thing. So we've got inside the hood and our work area here. So if my lens opening is this big and my eye is here, what I can see is going to be anything inside that wedge. Now if I move my eye just a little bit closer, Not the super straightest line, there we go. Now I've opened up that viewing area a whole bunch by just moving my eye closer to the lens. And there is a way to do this in almost all welding helmets. So inside your helmet, you're gonna have something that looks like this and you can adjust how far away your eye sits, your eye relief. You can adjust that with this little setting here. So you can just move that closer to effectively give yourself more eye relief. So, if you're if you're using it for weld, you know, just for welding, the eye relief is really not that big of a deal. Where it does become a big deal is if you're using it as a grind shield as well. Having a bigger area for grinding might be more important to you. So just keep that in mind as you're making your decision. Now that you have a pretty good idea on what kind of welding helmet you want, or at least have the tools to start sifting through them. I want to thank you so much for your time in watching this video. If you've liked this content so far and the other, other videos that I've posted, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. I'm really enjoying doing the videos and, and kind of building this community, so I'd love to grow it some more and I'd love for you to be a part of it. Now for my personal recommendation. Understand that when you're picking your first welding helmet, you're really investing into your future in welding. And for me, I think the best investment is going with the Miller Digital Elite. I think it gives you a lot of the high quality auto darkening features while taking care of auto darkening's biggest weakness with the X mode, meaning that you can weld outside and you're not relying on the photo sensors or the light sensors to make your, your lens change. That being said, I think anything on the table here is great. There's a reason I have them all. Um, use the tools that we, we've talked about today to make the best decision for you. Once you've found a welding helmet, please come back to the video and leave it down in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys have found. Thank you again for your time and have a wonderful day.